Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astro activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years, right? You're not crazy. <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy Saturnian age influence. And it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular, right? And, you know, this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface, right? In a way that we can't ignore anymore. So, Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond. So take a moment, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel. Cozy in as we get into some UA light celestial insight from the stars, right? And the cards related to the collective astrology predictions, and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight, right? On challenges, um, what you don't see coming, and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're going to experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures 
hopefully, right? Um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here, right? And what happened to certain hopes and dreams and, you know, these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change, challenges, limitations, and hardships in your personal life, but also the world. The world has changed so much in relationship to these transits, right? And so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just March being, oh, just a great month and da 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 da. You know, it's like, yeah. But, you know, many of you are already experiencing, you know, this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences, you know, being at these crossroads. And it's a part of this collective energetic process, you know, of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth. And that will extend, you know, into April throughout Aries season, okay? And so this mix of experiences and emotions, you know, being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month, for example, where we begin March still in Pisces season, right, with Mercury entering Pisces as well on March 7th, where it's going to make a conjunction with Saturn in this critical degree of exiting Aquarius and entering into Pisces, right? And this is going to be that energy, you know, of like some emotional, but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and, you know, your future. And on this very same day, you know, this 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 sort of uh, dualistic energy, right? It's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day, Venus in Aries makes a conjunction with Jupiter in Aries at 12 degrees, while Jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with Chiron, you know, and Chiron is the wounded karmic healer, right? And so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of March, right? Until that uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron becomes exact on March 12th, right? And so this puts this emphasis, right, on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and, you know, trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you, right? And so from the beginning, March 2nd, through the full moon on the 7th, and through the end of the full moon weekend, which ends with that Jupiter and Chiron conjunction on the 12th, we have Venus and Mercury's conjunctions with Jupiter and with Saturn and the full moon illuminations, which connects with Uranus and Mars, sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising, emotional, and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways, right? But to ultimately bring you closure of some sort, right? So that you accept the truth of something and um, be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward, right? It, and it, this could happen in a number of ways. It could be um, a conflict an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits 
or it could be news of a conflict, right, related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, Right, is also an, an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot, and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing, downloading, and speaking what you truly desire for your life, especially because with the full moon astrology, we have the sun in Pisces making a harmonious connection with Uranus and Taurus while it's also illuminating the moon in Virgo, right? Making the full moon uh, sort of sextile with Uranus, right? And with that in the mix, it really suggests high spiritual, psychic, and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars suggesting you know possible conflict and even a uh, fire-based natural disasters um literally in terms of what this degree um is associated with right so take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um any sort of fire-based emergencies um so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week. Okay, so this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right, including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift and the rebirth, right, of the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, March 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month, okay? But let's discuss that week, that tricky week of March 11th through the 18th, okay? So we have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus, okay? And um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations, um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work, 
um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades right in their um, physical emotional and spiritual bodies okay and then you know this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron right and that is that sort of dynamic energy and um, but to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough, truly, in a number of ways. And um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this, okay? But it's also giving, you know, long lost twin flame, reaching out to you, all kind of things could be happening with that, all right? And then from the 13th through the 17th, we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury. Sun, not the Mercury. Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces and then all squaring Mars and Gemini okay and um, then we have Venus in Aries um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn right and Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too right so this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people you know on on all sides might be uh, you know not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around you know values and you know these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and you know um People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life. Feeling confused in your daily routines. What to do in these interactions. And even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um there's a higher chance of being more empowered emotionally stable um and supported in steering your outcomes um later right and then um also, 
wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances. And, you know, with people who you just no, are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so... You know, that's that's really the mix, right? So um, when Venus enters into Taurus, you know, we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded. Um, there'll be more of a focus on pleasure, self-care, beauty, comfort, and, you know, thinking about your financial security and stability. With Venus entering into Taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly the Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month. It could illuminate. Um, you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and uh, Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, and all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations. All right. So now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay. So we have Mercury um, and the sun entering into Pisces on the 19th through the 20th, and then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right, happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree 
because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy. Um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right? In your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter. And this means that it is such a great time for starting new things, launching new things. It's great for marketing. This could be a time where you're receiving great news, clarity, right, on your directions with long-term goals and plans even. You could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, or even study or work abroad opportunities, right? And um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas. Um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately right so don't overcommit don't overpromise um, do what you can with what you can with what you know <laughs> but this mercury and aries conjunction with jupiter is happening as jupiter is also becoming invisible right so again there could be unforeseen news and circumstances right and then we end the month with mars and cancer trining saturn and pisces and venus and taurus conjuncting uranus okay so this is um the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people um where you could get new ideas about something creative right um and that you could do business-wise uh related to fashion beauty 
the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like break up and make up energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it'll be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely... Uh, Take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma, that your actions have the potential to renew your karma, right? In a number of ways, it could end karmic cycles, um, but it could also even extend certain karmas, right? Depending on your actions. And so um, that's also what Saturn and Pluto are really all about, okay? So it is just being really emphasized here. So I'm gonna read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that all there are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions they support and surround you with love and healing and this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly right and that is absolutely related to um pluto being an aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic, maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says old and negative habits, patterns and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow. Okay, so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective. And we're going to now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month. Hello there, Cancer. So there is a lot of attention on you this month, actually. And um, in particular, the theme of your reading is money and attention 
magnet, right? And that's particularly because we have the two quadrants of money and outward focused activity, attention, awards, and feedback full of astral activity for you. This is all about the ways you've been moving and shaking and shining in career, truly expanding your networks, your market reach, and your connections with wisdom traditions and wise career moguls, right? In ways that support your visionary professional goals, goals related to product development, entertainment, media, technology, writing, publishing, even higher learning, spirituality, wellness, and psychology, and generally growing your finances. And the thing is, is that you've been seeing incredible rewards from these efforts in major ways for a while, but especially lately, right? And Just getting some major feedback and synchronistic like indicators of your potential and the path forward. This month, as you continue to monetize all that you know and capitalize off of your creativity and your expanded networks and market reach, there is a central focus on your financial management, career activities, and reputation and recognition in the eyes of the public, right? Through media, publishing, higher education, and higher wisdom, and particularly public attention to your ideas and your body. Right. And that includes your fashion and your overall appearance this month. Right. Indicating that these will be the areas of life where you are experiencing revelations, positive opportunities, but also conflicts, gossip, drama or controversial feedback, crossroads, climaxes and karmic completions. Right. That are just this mix of being surprising, angering, and emotionally triggering, but ultimately sobering and then liberating in terms of the lessons that you get from it, right? And this is because we begin the month with Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron's conjunctions in your 10th house of career while we also have Mercury's conjunction with Saturn in your ninth house of publishing higher wisdom, international reach, and that trining your sign really powerfully. Um, while the full moon is illuminating your 11th house and third houses of the spread of ideas and news, right? Via writing, publishing, social media, marketing, and social groups. And this full moon is also connecting with Uranus and it's squaring Mars in your 12th and your first houses, right? So that's all about psychology, spirituality, the body, and identity. And that's quite a lot, right? Um, and I'm going to break that down in, in a second, but this full moon is conjuncting Nessus, which is um, this sort of uh, asteroid, and it's something that is uh, actually powerfully influencing the full moon energies and activities and the circumstances that people are dealing with. But I'm seeing this particularly strong for you, right? Um, in terms of the full moon conjuncting Nessus and it making these conjunctions with Uranus in your 12th house, um, which is the house of secret enemies, while it's making a square to Mars and Gemini, where Mars and Gemini is also all about like it's conflict, it's fighting with your words and facts, and you know, it can mean gossip, right? And this is all about surprising attacks, all the astrology that I just mentioned, all this stuff, right? In terms of what is happening this first week of March, it is all a recipe for surprising attacks, insights, and issues with enemies and trolls in your industry, on the internet. This could be smear campaigns. This could be stalemates, right? Um, Stalemate conflicts that were never resolved, but that are reaching a sort of boiling point and being particularly highlighted and that are really charged in this moment. This could be about being gaslit by someone who refuses to be accountable and honest about their deceptive actions, right? Um, And, you know, I mentioned in the uh, collective astrology breakdown at the beginning of this video, 
it's really strong here for you all and it's also mirrored here like in the cards if you if you look in this first row of cards and the fact that we have the justice the tower and the empress and even the devil and the magician cards here in reverse all in this spread for you it's like this this uh queen of swords here in the front row in the first row can often indicate you know public speaking and careers involving the internet and media and we have this queen of swords essentially having to set a boundary and protect her abundance right if you see this ten of pentacles that she's looking at and you know she's having to face the chaos of all these birds around her head and like in her space related to this professional network represented by the ten of pentacles here as well you know um in this card in particular in this deck this 10 of pentacles i often you know get this association with not just you know the sort of traditional meaning of the 10 of pentacles where it's like okay it's representing this this abundant harvest right from all of these seeds that you've planted and pruned but in this card in particular whenever i use this deck i always get this sort of strong um association of this ten of pentacles representing also like a industry of of professionals right a professional network and also even the ways that people can be uh, like gatekeepers um you know in a particular sort of like close-knit uh or exclusive sort of community or network right um and so i'm getting all of that with this right and so she's this queen of swords you know she's turning away from the devil and the magician in reverse and this knight of swords and like trying not to let all the mess all of the toxicity the manipulation and these sort of like clear uh, sort of calculated attacks, you know, sort of get in her head, right? While it's also something that she can't quite escape, you know? And, you know, the Knight of Swords in reverse often indicates, you know, these sort of calculated jabs and like hurtful words and like attacks, right? And the thing about this is like, um, right, and then we have the compromise card here, right? So it's just, it's just very clearly here about, um, this sort of impasse, you know, this clear impasse here with, with, with some sort of toxicity with, you know, a professional network and with, you know, all of those things I mentioned. And, um, I'm also getting that there could be a sort of overt sexist undertone to any of these conflicts and any attacks related to the attention to your body and appearance here, where, you know, attention to your body is you know due to some speculation around you know the mystery of how you've transformed maybe related to surgery or on account of you know like your holistic wellness and fitness journey and um you know these sorts of things are always sen sensationalized with women getting picked apart the most right in a particular way and um it's like even though uh, this deck, you know, absolutely relates to women and because it's the muses deck, right? So it's so focused on, you know, women in terms of its depictions. And, you know, obviously we can read the energies and should read the energies in these really nuanced and gender neutral ways, but Again, because of the um, astrology here where uh, Pluto has been in your eighth house while this full moon is connecting with Nessus, I'm getting that there's a particular focus on women and women being uh, picked apart in a particular kind of way here, right? And I'm going to explain that in a second. So Pluto has been in your eighth house, right, for years. And this big move of Pluto into Aquarius is all about Pluto transitioning from your eighth house into your ninth house, right? And we're in these critical degrees of Pluto in your eighth house, right? And um, 
Pluto in the eighth, and in general, because Pluto also rules the eighth, <laughs> it's related to um, surgery, actually. It's related to surgery, um, relationships to the medical industry, cosmetic surgery, all of these things. It is also the house of mystery. It's the house of, like, um, spiritual transformation and, um, trauma and healing and just all of these things. Right. And then, um, the mythology of Nessus, um, which is conjuncting this full moon also has this, um, sort of storyline that emphasizes, uh, violence that is done to a woman, right? In this scenario where there is um, secret enemy and betrayal, right? The woman is the sort of collateral damage and um, suffers, right? In this sort of uh, dick swinging contest and this sort of conflict between two men, right? She hangs in the balance of that of that conflict, right? And she gets attacked physically. Um, and so that's why I'm getting that this is overwhelmingly seeming to be about a woman, right? In terms of how women get picked apart, how a woman is being betrayed, is uh, maybe being, you know, attacked in the media, um, and at the heart of some sort of, you know, like sm smear campaigns, um, just judgment, hate, speculation, all of these kinds of things in terms of career industries, networks, and professional success, just all of this. Okay. Right. Um, but in general, right. It's like, because of, you know, Pluto and, um, having been in your sign for such a long time, um, any transformations you've undergone, you know, have been happening for a long time and are absolutely related to spirituality, um, a sort of deep spiritual transformation, and also about, you know, you coming to um, some empowerment, right? And when you couple that with the fact that Mars has been in your 12th sign, your 12th house um, in Gemini for seven months and is now moving into your first house at the end of this month, you know, and Mars being in the 12th and the first is also all about these sort of tests of mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical fitness, right? To sustain your busy life, right? It's like all of this is in the mix, right? It's complex. And, and you know, that could absolutely be why, uh, you know, this queen of swords is like this, right? It's like, you don't know what the fuck I've been through, <laughs> you know? And, you know, at this point it's like, I'm empowered and I have shit to protect. Right. And that's really what I'm getting from these cards and, you know, justice and the tower here at the bottom. That's, that's absolutely about, um, the tower card is related to Pluto, right? And so there will be some sort of like powerful resolution. This is absolutely linked to some larger um, sort of karmic closure in this sort of long journey of a powerful spiritual, um, personal empowerment and career transformation that has been happening for you for a very, very long time. Um, and it's, I mentioned in the general astrology, it's like, there's, there's just this huge turning point about karmic closure. So things are coming up to the surface as these sort of final tests. All right. And, um, so Mars, you know, being going in the, from the 12th to the first, it's also about, you know, these battles with imposter syndrome and mental health and about, you know, your physical health, your physical body appearance and any image transformations. And so this is all just amplified in this moment related to the remaining astrology. And then with, um, with Saturn entering your ninth house and trining your first house in general throughout its duration in Pisces for the next, uh, like three years. Um, there will, 
continue to sort of be this folk, at least during the, from the moment that Mars or the duration of Mars being in your first house, it's like, it's going to be, um, trining, you know, Mars in your first house. And so again, that's about attention on your health or some makeover in your appearance, your weight, your fashion, etc. And, you know, the cards really speak to the ways that you've been invested in clean eating, being vegan or vegetarian, you know, cleanses, fasting, and just truly healing and purifying your life, your mind, body, and spirit, right, of toxicity. And, you know, with that, you know, light can attract darkness. And these are also all of these sort of climactic lessons around Pluto, right, um, and there's just this overall theme of mindful divestment and investment. And this is also relevant to the major theme, you know, of the astrology being your finances and your professional life, right? It's figuring so strongly in the astrology has been for a while and um, is absolutely so strong for you this month. And is seen here in the cards as well. You know, the cards are definitely speaking of like, um, you know, financial breakthroughs and financial freedom. You know, for some of you, you could be becoming debt free and finally reaching financial freedom. For others of you, this is about, you know, financial management and accounting and, uh, and taxes and understanding your assets and your worth, right, to plan investments even. This could be receiving a big payout from a grant or a loan or having more recreational capital from paying off a debt or even securing a new contract, right? And um, this could also be about unexpected business expenses, right? And even navigating trust in business and financial advisors and partners. These are all the sort of like the stream of conscious um, sort of psychic insights I got from the cards when I pull them out. I'm also seeing something here about restaurant owners and opening with this nine of pentacles here. Um, for, for anyone like selling a product, I'm getting, you know, this message about a popular item selling out. I'm getting shipping and manufacturing and supply chain um, sort of issues to resolve, restock alerts, right? There being lots of demand for something that you create, offer, or do in career, right? And having to solve some operational issues, right, in manufacturing and supply chain. A good problem to have, perhaps, right? And um, maybe even some of this energy of betrayal and secret enemies could apply for some of you related to distrust with business partners who you work with directly, as opposed to maybe some looming, you know, person who you don't have a relationship with that could be in your industry or who could be a troll, right? And maybe this could even be about you renegotiating business contracts, right? And you're just trying to navigate discernment and someone's intentions and then um with the saturn saturn entering pisces um and then also it saturn and pisces trining your trining mars in your sign at the end of the month literally on march 30th um I'm getting that for some of you. I immediately got the word podcast, but um, in general, I'm getting that with Saturn entering Pisces and then it tr trining cancer, that some of you could be opening up some additional channel of income and expanding like your messaging or your reach to the public and your reach to customers right through maybe a new sales channel or a new social media platform or channel as well. Right. And that could be, that could be a number of things. Take it how it applies to you. Um, some of you could be seeing some conflict or mixed feedback on the ideas you express or operational hiccups to resolve, you know, related to just your business operational issues. And then, um, also, you know, this full moon is in your second house of finance while we have Venus and Jupiter and Mercury, all of these planets, um, 
you know, of money and opportunity and rewards really blazing through and blessing your house of career achievement and reputation, right? While Uranus, you know, in Taurus all of this time has been about gifting you rewarding opportunities and ideas as well to really grow your career in finance through utilizing media publishing and partnerships. And so these things are going to continue to grow for you, be really positive, be really blessed. Um, And, you know, I'm just really getting that for some of you, any issues and conflicts that you're dealing with, some of it just really reeks of what it means to be like a high net worth individual or a public figure or just a really successful person, right? Whether that is you being internet, small town, or like just industry famous, right? And whatever it is that you do, it can vary, but that's what I'm getting. And it's like this energy of, you know, illumination, positive opportunities, conflicts, crossroads, and these climaxes and even closures, right? Sparked at the beginning of the month in all of these areas. It's going to just continue and build through mid-March and, you know, with a number of emotional roller coaster transits until we reach this sort of energetic shift for rebirth around the new year, the new moon in Aries and spring equinox on the 19th. And um, you know, throughout the end of March and in gone on through April, right? So stay tuned for more about how this new moon um astrology will be impacting you powerfully because it will. All right. Um, so we have Venus in Taurus, uh, I think that's on the 16th. Um, but from that date on um, through Mars and Gemini entering into your sign on the 25th, and Mercury and Aries making that big conjunction with Jupiter on the 28th in your house of career, and then um, Mars in your sign making that trine with Saturn and Pisces, um, and then Venus conjuncting with Uranus and Taurus, which is... Um, your 12th house. It's like, there's a lot there, but it's ultimately it boils down to, you know, from the time that Venus enters Taurus through the end of the month, you could experience a few things like someone trying to earn your love or your business or even forgiveness um, by, you know, trying to show themselves, right? Uh, It could mean peace offerings. Um, It could be resolving some financial, legal, tax, or supply chain issues like mentioned and, you know, making some sort of financial decisions that are in the interest of your long-term best interest. And it's just from that new moon onward, it's just an incredibly benefic time for you for starting new things. Um, And, you know, by the last week of the month, you'll hopefully, you know, get to this place where it's like the karmic lessons, the communications from the conflicts, everything that you learn, the climaxes, everything, Um, you know, hopefully will just be helpful for influencing your long-term mindfulness and your discernment and conflict resolution skills, right? And to help your continued success in your career. And that's really, that's really the big, big thing. And, you know, I just, I wish you well. Definitely try your best to stay centered. Um, you know, claim your peace, claim your success. Um, and handle things. in you know, just a really, I don't even know. It's like, I think cancers are in general really good about handling conflict in a, in a very tasteful and graceful way. But I think in general, um, just don't, don't cave under any pressure, claim your power, right? That's what Pluto has been all about all of these years, truly. It's been about empowering you and you coming to this place of seeing how 
strong you are, how all of your trauma that you've healed and confronted and all of the lessons and the growth that you've experienced, how it has really just like led to incredible ideas and so much abundance, right? From you being in this transformed, really empowered place. And so um, don't let it break you <laughs> and don't uh, fold under any pressure. So this compromise card here says, are you in a situation where you need to make a compromise or are you compromising too much? This card asks you to review your position and to be sure to find a solution that takes the need of all parties into account, but including yourself. And then the cycles of the moon, right? It's like, it says, this card invites you to attune yourself with the rhythms of the moon. Notice how the phases of the moon affect your energy and learn to use these energetic shifts within you to enhance your capacity to be consciously co-creative in all aspects of your life. I'm getting with this that um, any conflicts you'll be able to turn around. Um you can you you can use this energy. You can transmute it and use it to your advantage, um, professionally in some way. And I see this Queen of Swords here, and this Justice, and this Pluto, and then this Empress here being about. And and even if you look at like the Magician in Reverse, this row here, the Magician in Reverse is like, and the Nine of Pentacles. This hand is like you can take that energy if somebody trying to like distract you, manipulate you, draw you into mess. You can use that energy. Um, you can use you can use the attention, right? You can use it to expand your platform, to draw, to redirect the attention to the things that you want to grow, right? Because it's this empress right underneath here, right? And it's like you you know what you know what to do. You will know what to do. And um, especially because by the end of the month, there's so much astrology. There's so many astrological transits here where your use of media and um, different sales channels and uh, like divine like perfect divine timing to launch new things is like so blessed that you could absolutely plan launches <laughs> and um just redirect this energy and attention to feed your bottom line that's it that's the message cancer <laughs>